Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Yus Yusuf. Uh, I'm uh, reporting uh, for Room Now. Uh, I'm from Leeds, United Kingdom. Unfortunately, uh, I'm not available uh, to attend uh, the ACR conference in person. However, this is the uh, wonderful things about the hybrid conference where I can join my colleagues uh, through online. Uh, today, uh, I'm privileged uh, to be joining uh, uh, to be joined by uh, Dr. Amit Saxena, Associate Professor uh, in Medicine at uh, New York University. Uh, hi, Amit. Hey, how are you? Thanks for having me. Yeah, welcome. Um, so today we would like to talk about uh, an abstract uh, two, uh, 2081 uh, that was presented at the um, at Lightning uh, uh, Lightning Poster talk today. Um, so Amit, uh, would you like to tell us about uh, the background of the studies and what were your objectives? Yeah, so, you know, we know that patients that have systemic lupus are at high risk for severe disease from COVID-19. Uh, based on their kind of inherent immune perturbations and also just the fact that they use these immunosuppressants. Uh, and, and those immunosuppressants also can affect the responses to the COVID vaccines. You know, we've seen the decreased vaccine responses in patients who take those types of medications. Uh, and this objective of this study really was to see what the impact of uh, an additional dose or what we call the booster dose of those vaccines was uh, in patients with systemic lupus, particularly because uh, you know, shortly after most people started having those booster doses, uh, we were hit with that big Omicron wave in New York, which happened in, in from December to February. And so kind of pressure tested, uh, you know, what the vaccine responses were going to be. Uh, and so, you know, we wanted to evaluate how effective those doses were, uh, comparing people who had the booster dose and those who didn't, and also then looking at the serologic changes and, and the response to those vaccines as well. That's great. Um, so just to clarify that, so majority, so the, the study was done predominantly during the Omicron uh, period. You know, we tracked our patients, you know, from the time that they got the vaccine. So we do have data from before that. Uh, but, uh, but, you know, the truth was there weren't a lot of breakthrough infections in that time period. Really, we only had two breakthrough infections before Omicron. Uh, and then when Omicron came, was we saw the potentially the vaccine uh, evasiveness of that variant uh, led to a large number of cases. Uh, although I think one of the key takeaways of this study was that even though there were a large number of cases, there wasn't a lot of that severe disease that we saw early. Uh, and we really kind of uh, think that that's for the effectiveness of the vaccines overall. Mm -hmm. So would you like to uh, tell us uh, some, some key points of the, the results of your um, study? Yeah, sure. So, uh, you know, we looked at 163 patients from our lupus cohort uh, at NYU, and um, and we followed them for a mean of 11.2 months afterwards, you know, at least six months after their vaccine uh, or uh, until the time of the breakthrough infection. Uh, and, um, and, you know, 125 of those patients had uh, a, a booster dose. So we were really looking at the comparison between those patients who had it and those patients who didn't. Uh, and what we saw was that you know, about 22% of the patients that did have that additional dose of the vaccine had a breakthrough infection, while 42% while of, the, of the patients who didn't have the vaccine, the additional vaccine had it. So that was actually a statistically significant to 0 0.02. Uh, uh, and, uh, and so that tells us that in addition to just helping prevent severe disease, these booster doses were actually helping prevent people from catching um, COVID-19. Oh, fantastic. Um, so just uh, out of interest, um, of those uh, people who did get the um, breakthrough infections, um, so what was the nature of the infection? Was it was it mild or you know, severe hospitalization and so forth? It was mild. Uh, and so we only had two hospitalizations and both of those patients were treated. And, and uh, most importantly, there were no COVID-19 deaths. And again, that's a very big difference to earlier in the pandemic. We looked at the same cohort, our same lupus cohort uh, early in the pandemic and obviously had much more severe disease pre-vaccine. So this data is really encouraging for us to, you know, to counsel our patient, particularly, you know, the the eff effectiveness of the you know, booster vaccination in protecting our lupus patients. Um, so in terms of um, uh, how do we bring into clinical practice and also what's your um, you know, future research, you know, af af after these findings? Yeah, I think what you said is exactly right. I think at least having some strong data to tell our patients uh, that uh, that you know, that, that we recommend this and we can actually back this up with data is, is really important. Um, and, you know, and we're just one of many, obviously, uh, clinical studies that have been looking at some of these questions. 
Uh, and we're seeing the same responses, uh, you know, kind of throughout. And 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 the other studies are showing the safety of these booster vaccines and the vaccines in general. So so just the more information we have, uh, the better we can we, it is to talk to our patients. And you know, we're going to continue following this cohort and seeing what happens to them as they develop. Obviously, as we get new vaccines, we'll be monitoring those things as well. And so you know, we'll we'll keep t- taking a look at this these patients. Uh, th- thank you so much, um, Dr. Saxena, uh, for uh, a quick recap of uh, you know, your, your your findings, uh, and thank you for all um, for for listening today. Uh, and uh, please uh, follow um, uh, Room Now uh, through um, Twitter, uh, YouTube, uh, and uh, LinkedIn. Thank you.